What's going on everybody? My name is Aiden and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like there has been some critiques going around about Josh Giddy and his last Olympic game. No, it's not the one against Serbia, which is taking place as of this recording, but the one against Greece. He had a very disappointing performance and it looks like people are reacting to it in a very negative way. So as a Bulls fan, I want to talk about this situation from a Bulls perspective and ultimately, very similar to the video where we talked about him having a good performance against Spain, just try to see the bigger picture with the addition of Josh Giddy. But before we get any further, if you liked the video and you want to see more from me, drop a like, drop a follow, and or subscribe if you are new. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts about Josh Giddy and whether or not you think he'll have a good season for the Chicago Bulls. With that being said, let us get started. So look, it is no lie, Josh Giddy did play a bad game in the Olympics. He had a couple of turnovers, he had a really bad shooting night, and he didn't really contribute much in the playmaking side of things. Australia did lose that game as well. So that is all very disappointing news, especially from an Australian that wants Australia to do well in the Olympics, to see them lose. I think they lost two in a row. Right now, they're winning against Serbia. Let's hope it stays that way. Uh, ultimately, of course, it sucks to see your home country kind of misrepresent or, or not misrepresent. That's the wrong word, but to lose. Uh, you don't want to see your country lose. It's as simple as that. But with that being said, we have to look at it from a Bulls perspective. And there are actual articles being written about how bad Josh Giddy's performance was and how it can bring major concern for Chicago Bulls fans across the world. Like it's such a horrible thing that he had one bad game. But at the end of the day, I will say this. And it's exactly what I said when he had a good game against Spain. You can't look at the Olympics as the ultimate answer to what he will bring to the Chicago Bulls. Now look, the concept of basketball is the same between the two competitions. You put the ball in the basket. It's, it's a very broad concept, but that's ultimately how to play basketball. You obviously have some of the rules that are the same. The tempo is not the same, no. And it's not the same competition. The Olympics is a tournament-based game. Obviously, the Bulls and the NBA, it's an 82-game season, playing tournaments and whatnot, and then it gets to the tournament type of feel, the best of seven type of feel. It's just completely different. And we shouldn't be treating the Olympic Josh Giddy to the Bulls Josh Giddy. The ultimate answer to this situation is that we just have to wait and see what he can bring to the Chicago Chicago Bulls come September or October, November, December, and the rest goes on. Sure, you could critique him based on the Olympics, because that's happening right now. And if he's having a bad game in the Olympics, you can critique him from that standpoint. But to make you know, actual articles, or to say that because of this game, he's going to play badly with the Bulls... It just doesn't make sense to do. Thankfully, I feel like not many people on YouTube are saying that, but on broader social media, that seems to be the trend when it comes to Josh Giddy and when it comes to the Olympics. We just have to wait and see. That's all I'm going to say on that situation. It's just frustrating to kind of see how quickly things can turn. Last week, or at the, be at the end of last week, People were saying, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to see Josh Giddy, and he's going to be so amazing for the Bulls. And we had to bring it down a peg when it comes to that situation. Now you've got this situation where people are saying he's going to play horribly for the Bulls, he's not going to make an impact, he's going to be shut out like he was in the playoffs and all these things, and now you have to try and raise him back up a bit. But we need to see the bigger picture. I want to quickly go to his defense as well and say, it's, it's just one bad game. You're telling me some of the best players in the world haven't had bad games? Kyrie Irving last season, I think it was last season, had like a two-point game against the Bulls. Maybe it was the season before. I'm not sure when it was. Um, Zach Levine has had really bad game with the games with the Bulls. He still ends up averaging 25 points per game. Kyrie Irving made the NBA Finals this season. They've had bad games. Everybody has a bad game. So let's not just, you know... Hit the panic button right now based on one bad game, let alone Olympics or not, NBA or not. It's one bad game. Come on now. Let's, let's be reasonable about this, ladies and gentlemen. But I want to show you the bigger picture here. And the bigger picture is this is going to be a long-term investment for Josh Giddy. The Bulls have already made it clear they'd like to keep him around long-term. So it's about his development. 
So assume he's going to make mistakes next season. Assume he's not going to be the absolute best you could possibly see from him. Assume there's going to be so much room for improvement because the majority of people will already think that and most likely that's going to be the case. We are not signing Josh Giddy to be our best MVP caliber player next season. We are signing him for his development. We are signing him because we believe we could get the best development out of him, out of him, and we're developing him for the long-term success. We brought him in for long-term potential, for long-term development, long-term success. That's the bigger picture. If you're expecting Josh Giddy to come in next season and just absolutely carry the Bulls into the finals... I don't know what rock you've been living under, but the Bulls aren't good enough for that. Maybe they could surprise us, sure. But 99% of people don't believe the Bulls are going to be competing. So why are we critiquing Josh Giddy for one bad game when it's going to bring major concern? Let him develop. He's going to have to learn. Maybe he does miss a lot of threes for the Bulls. Maybe he does sometimes feel shy and not take the threes. Maybe sometimes he doesn't get the rebounds or he doesn't make the playmaking impact we want him to. But he needs to develop. And sometimes developing is a painful sight that falls in our very eyes. And we've seen it. And heck, we've critiqued it even more than what we have with Josh Giddy right now. I can always bring the example of Kobe White. Season 2 and Season 3, 90%, at least 90% of Bulls fans wanted Kobe White out of here. Bye-bye, see you later, don't come back. Then season four comes around and you actually see the development that he's been putting in come into fruition and people are begging him to stay. People want him to sign that contract and he did, thankfully. It's, it happened to Io. Io second season, boom, I don't want Io anymore. Waste of time. Not going to develop. Not good enough. Season three comes around. Man, I'm happy we brought back Io. I, I, I like what he's done. He's very, very talented. His efficiency's gone up. Let's keep Io. It happens to everybody. So please, the bigger picture, don't think so short term about these players and about the signings that we have made. We have a clear vision to go younger. We will not win a championship this season or next season. We, will, we might not win a championship for a while. And there is a chance that going younger will still fail. That you have to look at these realities, but you have to give it time and patience. It is the most important thing to do when you're dealing with young players. Mateus Bazelis, for example, he's not going to come in and become our best player straight away. He might struggle from the field. He might not take the best shots. He might struggle. Maybe. We don't know. But if he does, don't just say, let's get rid of him. Give it time. Give Josh Giddy time. He's 21. There's still so much room there. There's still improvement that can happen. Got to give him time to try and figure it out. So ultimately to the articles, look, hey, I'm making this video. So I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm, you know, I'm the only one that's trying to be level-headed about this. At the end of the day, people are making articles and making these types of um, comments for views and comments and, and, and reactions. And maybe I'm doing the same thing in a small way. But I want to be level-headed and I want to show the bigger picture behind this. And just as much as some of the other young guys that we've, we've kept around. Even Patrick Williams. No one wants Patrick Williams. Even now people don't want Patrick Williams. But you've got to see the bigger picture behind keeping him around. And I think that's the key here. That's the goal behind this video. So if you see it, great. I'm happy. But if you guys don't see it, at least don't become overreactionary and so short-minded and just say, let's get rid of them. You know, again, it just it's just not going to help anybody. And it doesn't make sense, especially in an Olympics. Come on now. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Drop a like and a follow and or subscribe if you are new. And I will see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned for more. Take care. And peace.